Um, and you guys absolutely love the crunchy one that we've got on the side that I did at the, was actually my very first Kitchen Live when we were in lockdown, sort of April, Easter time last year. And <laughs> it's getting loads of hits, but I have been wanting to make this for so long. And I've been seeing a lot of the caramel milk, caramel sort of chocolate coming through from Australia and all the fabulous things that are coming out. And then last week, Cadbury's announced it was going to produce caramel in the UK. And I thought, do you know what? This is my sign. This is what we're going to need for our Biscoff Rocky Road. <laughs> so I grabbed as many as I possibly could on the online shop order this week, and that's what we're going to be doing it with. But you can use regular white chocolate, and we're going to talk about that when we get into it. So this Rocky Road is going to be quite rich. Um, you, it can make 12 to 24 portions. It all depends on how big or small, you cut your Rocky Road chunks. But it is so quick and it is super easy. Um, it's absolutely no bake, there's no faff. We're gonna whack everything in a big bowl, melt a bit of chocolate and throw it all together. That's pretty much really it, what it is. But we're also gonna stuff it full of Biscoff spread and Biscoff biscuits as well. Um, but you can use any, you don't have to use Biscoff ones. The beauty of the Rocky Road is that you can make it whatever you want to make it. It's entirely your own. Um, and this is really great to make with kids. There's one bit where it's warm where we're going to be melting some chocolate and some butter. But the rest of it is just throwing stuff in and mixing it all together. So it is a really good one to do with the smalls. So let's talk about our ingredients then. So we're going to be going in. Now, these are sort of, I guess, they're not set in stone. Probably the chocolate and the butter are the ones that you want to definitely stick to those ingredients. But you can pile as much else in here as you want to. So first off then, I've got two different types of chocolate. And like I said, I'm going to be using the new Cadbury's Caramilk. Um, because it's it's like a caramelized sweetened white chocolate. Um, so it's going to work really well with the Biscoff. But if you haven't got the caramel um, or it's not available where you are, we can use just regular white chocolate as well. You can use things like Caramac as well um, if you're in the UK. But we're going to mix, actually, I don't want to use all of this purely because I want to save some for myself. But we're going to use 200 grams of this and 200 grams of white chocolate. Um, if you want to, you can use all caramel milk or you can use all white chocolate, but we're going to do half and half. So that's our two chocolates there. We're also then going to melt into that some uh, unsalted butter. This is 100 grams here, not a lot. Uh, and because it, it's melted, you don't need to make sure it's softened or anything like that. Just make sure it's cubed because it's easier then when we melt the chocolate. Obviously, this wouldn't be Biscoff Rocky Road without adding in some Biscoff biscuits. Now, I've got two sorts. I've got the chocolate co um, coated ones, but also I've just got the regular ones as well. And I might do a mix of them. I might just stick with the regular Biscoff uh, cookies because these have got like a milk dark chocolate on which might not work with the, the Belgian white chocolate and the caramel milk. We've also got our Biscoff spread. We're going to be melting some of this into our chocolate as well to get a Biscoff taste within our chocolate that's going to work really nice with that caramel milk. We've also got mini marshmallows. Um, you can use regular size ones as well if you, if you can't get hold of mini ones. What I'd suggest you do is chop these into like um, chunks with some scissors if you're going to use these, or if you can get mini ones, um, they're just as easy and you can chuck them through and get really good handfuls in. Um, we're also then finally just gonna pop in a good wadge of extra caramel with some caramel popcorn. Now this is, um, 
Entirely down to you. This is just something to add a little bit of an extra crunch nuts in your rocky road. And that really is the key to a good rocky road. Having it nice, those big chunks of biscuits or cookies or something like popcorn that when you eat, you've got the, the softness of the marshmallow, the sweetness of the chocolate and the crunch of those biscuits. So that's quite simple, our ingredients. And in terms of equipment, that's quite simple too. So you can make this in any tin really, but you can either, I recommend either doing it in a brownie tin or a rectangle tin such like this. Um, I'm going to be doing it in the same tin I made the brownies in, the raspberry Oreo brownies in last week, which is the nine by nine square cake pan with the loose base. So I'm going to be doing it in that. Um, that's going to give us a really nice thickness, but also make sure it allows me to get plenty of slices out of that. If you're doing it in a smaller tin, um, you're going to get really big, thick slabs of uh, Rocky Road, which some people really, really like, but I want to get a nice sort of, uh, sort of a good inch depth there on my Rocky Road. So we're doing it in the nine by nine inch pan. Pop that one out of the way because we're not using that. You're also going to need, obviously, something to mix this all in, and we're using a large mixing bowl. And, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to need a smaller bowl to melt your chocolate and your uh, butter in. So I've got a large mixing bowl to mix everything in and a smaller one for the, um, for the melting the chocolate. You're also going to need um, like some rubber spatulas, some spoons, just things to mix everything together. And you're also going to need some baking parchment. This is just regular greaseproof paper. We're not baking. It's not going to stick. So anything like this is going to work. And that's just going to help us lift our rocky road out at the end. You can also use uh, like a uh, kitchen rack or something like that just to line your tin with and, and lift everything out. But that's it. <laughs> that's our ingredients and our equipment. So we're going to jump in then to the recipe and start making it. So let's just move everything down. Now, today I'm going to be doing this on the little portable uh, stove here, melting our chocolates, just because I don't want to be going backwards and forwards to the microwave for you guys. But you can do this in the microwave. It is a lot quicker but we are just going to melt everything together on our hob. So let's pop our large bowl out of the way and we'll get our smaller bowl and we're going to get started with that. So, and I'm, because it's a small recipe, I'm going to weigh everything for you today as well, just as we go through, just to double check. I am, first off, I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be melting this on a double boiler. So I'm going to pop my saucepan in. I'm going to put about an inch of water in there just to start simmering it. You're not going to want anything, if you put it too deep, when you put, if you're using a double boiler, if you've got too much water in there, when you put your pan on the top, that water is going to uh, simmer and it's going to catch the bottom of your bowl. And when that happens, what the the, the, uh, the ingredients that are in contact with the bottom there are going to warm a lot quicker. And in the term, case of chocolate, that can make it seize or become grainy. So when you're using a double boiler for melting your chocolate, you want just about an inch of water in the bottom of your pan. So and that will be plenty for when you're when you're simmering away. Always, if you're doing this, kids, remember, um, if, you, if they're around when you're doing this, make sure your handles are away from the edge of the work surface. I've seen so many people recently doing videos and their, their pan handles are out in the, in the middle of the kitchen and it, it scares me. I don't like it. So then we're going to melt together our chocolate and our butter and we're going to melt together add into that our Biscoff spread. So let's go in first then with our butter. And this is 100 grams of just unsalted butter. That's quite soft now because it's quite warm this evening. I am hoping that this microphone is working. So if it isn't, please let me know that we haven't got any sound going because until I watch this back, I don't know. 
but I'm fingers crossed all my lights are telling me we are transmitting so then next up into there we want 400 grams of chocolate so like i said you can use this all white chocolate or mix up with the caramel milk um chocolate as well so i'm doing 200 grams of each if you want to you could um you know there's nothing stopping you doing this with a milk chocolate or a dark chocolate whatever you prefer but the biscoff with that caramel and that cinnamon and um, those nice warming spices goes really nicely with the white chocolate. So let's just, this is, this, you can see how warm it is in here this evening. This chocolate is just, I can break it so easily into pieces. It is really warm. And I'm not complaining because it's been a beautiful, beautiful day um, in that. So when you're making Rocky Road, if you're making it with, um, like regular chocolate, you are best, unless you really are a fan of something quite intense, you do want to go for a mix of milk and dark chocolate um, rather than just fully dark chocolate. Um, it just gives a nicer, smoother taste, especially as we've got everything in there. Um, but like I say, with this today, we're doing white chocolate. I'm just going to pop the rubbish to the side, actually. So here, this is the new uh, caramel milk, caramel, carrot milk <laughs> from Cadbury's. And it says open here, but it doesn't seem to want to open. Come on. I haven't, I've had these bars in the cupboard since the shopping arrived yesterday and I haven't, oh, it looks amazing and when we get through, i need to put two bars of this in so i'm going to save a i'm going to save a chunk um and have a piece it smells it it brings back a lot of memories of caram caramac uh from my childhood which you, i don't think you can get that well you see it more and more but for a while it sort of just disappeared um and things so uh, the light's shifting now, so I'm hoping this is going to be better. It is so, this is how warm it is in here today. So let's just. Mm. Oh. Mm. That's really good. It's not too sweet. It's not sickly or anything. Um, it's just got that nice, smooth caramel flavour that you can get if you caramelise white chocolate as well, if you bake it in the oven. That is really good. I'm so glad I've got two bars left. Not that I'm going to sit there and eat it all. Let's be honest. So... Next up then, we've got our chocolate and our uh, butter in there. And we're going to want our Biscoff in there as well. This is a new jar. This is this is quite a, a feat. Now, on the ingredients, I've said 100 grams of Biscoff. And for this size, we only want to put 50 grams in. Because at the end, once we've got everything assembled, we're going to melt some more Biscoff and drizzle it over the top like a bit of a sauce. So here... Let me get a fresh spoon and just zero that. I want 50 grams of Biscoff. And that should be nearly there. So it's a big spoon. It's about two tablespoons then. There we go. I'm just going to pop that to one side because I'm going to need it again later, like I said, for our top. So... We're going to melt this over the double boiler then. And this is a portable halogen, so it does come up to temperature quite quickly. Um, let's put this on manual. And when you're doing this, you don't want to boil it. It needs just to be a gentle simmer. Um, and I'm going to just pop that in there. So what I can do is I can, because it's next to me, I can just keep an eye on it there. 
in the meantime then, we're going to get our biscuits ready. Now, for this, like I say, we're using Biscoff, Lotus Biscoff cookies, uh, speckaloos, or whatever they're called um, in various parts of the world. Um, these are the chocolate covered ones, which I've just decided I'm not going to use because I don't want to add like a milk chocolate into my caramel and white chocolate mix. So I'm just going to pop them to one side and we're just going to use the regular Biscoff biscuits. So you want 250 grams of these. You want plenty of them in your mixture, but we're also going to save some for after because we're going to decorate the top. So these are, these are on offer. And it was a lot cheaper this time to buy them in the little packs uh, than to buy them just individually wrapped up. So you know, I'm just going to have to unwrap some. Uh, but I'm going to keep about, so there's two in each of these packs. I'm going to keep, what's that, 12 biscuits for the top. So I'm just going to pop them out of the way. And then the rest we're going to pop into... Here. Don't forget, we're adding in popcorn and we're adding in marshmallows as well. And when you break these up, um, this just do this by hand. But you don't want to break them up too small. If you break them up too small, you won't get that really nice crunch um, of your rocky road, those big crunchy pieces. And it, it might just crumble a bit when you um, cut it up. So let's just keep going in like that so where is everyone i mean the football's over the tennis is over the olympics haven't started yet um so i guess everybody's getting ready for love island <laughs> if you're watching that i know my brother is after a crushing defeat at the football um on su sun sunday sunday feels like a world away now so i'm just going in with the biscuits you see, I'm just breaking these with my fingers. This is why this one's good for the kids, because they can get in and, and do that. I'm going to have a look. I'm just going to keep going with these biscuits, and then I'll have a look at my Biscoff chocolate butter mixture in a moment. So this was about... So there were six packets. I think this is about 10 packets, so... Two, and it's about 20 biscuits here, if you're wondering. I think most packets of biscuits, uh, biscuits are about 250 grams. So if you just need a packet for this recipe, that should be plenty for you. But remember, don't break them up too small because we want nice big chunks in our rocky road. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I've got a bit of a tickle this evening. It's hay fever and time and everything here. <laughs> So, and I've got biscuity hands. I'm going to just grab a drink. One moment. <coughs> and then we're going to check in Ooh. on our meltingness. So, that isn't quite up to simmer yet, So, but it is getting warm. I can feel it. So I've just popped that up a little bit more. Let's get rid of this rubbish out the way. Let's pop that over there, out the way. So that's melting. We've got our biscuits. It's about 200 grams then. And we've got our 12 to go on the top once we've finished later. So into here then, you now want to add your other add-ins. We can get all this ready while this is melting. And... We're going to tr add in some marshmallows. And like I say, these are mini marshmallows. And these are the, the soft, squidgy bits that um, are in your, your rocky road. And you can use regular sized marshmallows if you prefer or you can't get hold of mini ones. So just before I pour those in, I do just want to have a quick check on that. It is starting to melt, because obviously as the water is uh, uh, coming up to temperature, it will start to um, it'll start to melt everything together. 
So you might be able to see that. There it is. Ah, that works quite well, actually, there. Just give it a little ease. And the thing is, you don't have to take this to the completely melted stage. You can take it to a stage where the, the residual heat, like most of the chocolate is melted, but the residual heat that's in there will finish melting off the chocolate. So whilst that keeps going, we'll give it another stir in a moment. We're going to add in our marshmallows. These are just the mini ones, the little squidgy ones, mm. <laughs> hot chocolate ones, the ones that don't last very long in your mouth. And we want about 50 grams of these. This pack actually is about 125 grams. So you can see actually how much 50 grams of mini marshmallows is. So... It doesn't sound a lot, but when you add it in, there's quite a few in there. So I can see this is going. So I'm just going to drop that down and just finish stirring this off. Now, the thing with this being this induction hob is that I can do this. If I was over a gas, I wouldn't be holding the bowl because the heat from the flame. So be careful with what you're doing. And this is a bit you don't want to do with small children. So as you can see there, it is coming into this really lovely, thick, caramelly, chocolatey, biscoffy, buttery texture. Now with my crunchy Rocky Road, when I'm using a dark chocolate, I do also tend to add in something like a golden syrup just to give a little bit of extra sweetness. But with this, that, the white chocolate and that caramel milk, the caramel chocolate um, and the biscoff has got plenty of sweetness in it. So we don't need to add any extra. So that for me is nearly there. So all I'm going to do then is I'm just going to turn off that And I'm going to pop this just on a trivet to cool down because we don't want to put it straight in there. But I will need this later. So that's just flashing hot. So where's my glove? So this is our melted chocolate. There we go. And the reason we're just going to let it cool down a little bit is it's a bit like when we're making our brownies, when we let our, our melted chocolate and our butter cool down, is that if we add it in, if in the brownies, if we add it in too soon, we'll scramble our eggs. If we add this in too soon, we're going to melt our marshmallows. Now, some people suggest you can pop your marshmallows in the freezer, which you can do if you want to. Um, I've never had a problem with it melting my marshmallows, but I do allow it to cool down for a little bit longer before I will add it together. So then I'm going to leave that, uh, just move that handle around because I'm going to melt some more chocolate to go on the top shortly. But back to our add-ins. And here we've got our Biscoff biscuit chunks, those nice big chunks, and our mini marshmallows. And next in, we're going to add in some, uh, this is actually salted caramel popcorn, but you can use just regular butter popcorn, um, cinnamon popcorn, cinema popcorn stars, probably a bit too sweet because it's got the sugar and everything on it. We want that caramelly um, sort of, this sort of texture, mm, like butter kissed. <laughs> so again, like on marshmallows, 50 grams of this will go a long way. So let's add it all in. There we go. And there's some left over for weekend film watching because we have our second jabs this weekend. So that's going to mean sitting on the sofa and not doing a lot, if I'm quite honest. So before we go pouring over anything, I'm just going to move the scale out of the way. Let's just give it a mix together. Now I know. That just sounds a bit dark, but you, you don't want everything, when you pour the chocolate in, clumping all together. So just give it a, a good mix. Now, traditionally, sort of, I was looking up this, thinking earlier, I said, where are thinking, where does Rocky Road come from? So I did a little bit of research. As you do, you give it a good old Google, and there's so many different ideas. But, you know, the it comes from America, actually Rocky Road ice cream, but 
Rocky Road in this form sort of originated in Australia around about 18, in the 1850s. So it's quite, although it's quite a modern sort of take on things, you know, you think all these different sweets and chocolates and biscuits in it. It's actually quite an old recipe. And it was done because when they were moving um, sort of confectionery from Europe to Australia, obviously things would spoil on that journey. It was quite a way. So it was one way of using up stuff that was spoiling as soon as it got there. Mix it all together, chuck it in a pan and and sort of let it chill. You'll sometimes find it also called things like a fridge cake or here in the UK used to be called tiffin. And traditionally you make it here with like a, a milk chocolate, a dark chocolate, uh, digestive biscuits, mini marshmallows, glacier cherries, all those sort of nice sweet things that when you get all combined, um, it just is a, a, a amazing mouthful, but um, and some people put nuts in it, but you can make this pretty much whatever you want. So, and that's what we're doing today with the Biscoff version. So, I'm just gonna leave that all there together for a moment. Just gonna give my chocolate a stir through. So that's. A st that's cooling down. So this is getting to the point where actually I can quite happily hold it. It's not burning my hands or anything. So that means it's nicely cooling and it will be good for um, adding into our marshmallows. But obviously we need to pop it all in something. I'm just going to move that across. And we're going to pop it into our baking pan again. So I'm using a 9 by 9 inch loose space cake pan, same as I did with the brownies last week. You can use a brownie pan, you can use a smaller pan if you want, rectangle pan, all sorts of things. Even I used to make it when I had the shop in a loaf pan and then and then slice it up. up. Uh, there we are. There we go, <laughs> back. Uh, so you can do it sort of in whatever pan you want. There's nothing to, to say you have to do it in a certain way. Um, but I like this. It's easy to cut up into slices, portion it up. And it also gives you a really nice thickness. So just like the brownies, what we're going to do is we're going to do two sheets of baking parchment that are about the width of our base. So let's do that. like that. Just going to take that up and pop that in. You don't need, um, uh, it doesn't need to be sort of um, baking parchment. This is just regular grease proof paper today because we're not baking anything. So it's not really going to stick stick. Um, there we go. That's the same width. Let's get rid of that. And then in here, just like before, we're going to lay it one side here. And we're going to use our clothes pegs just to hold it on. So we don't have to waste any baking spray or cake release or anything like that. Just sticking everything down that way. And then our other sheet, the opposite way. And it just means... This just helps you get it out as well at the end. It's just really quite easy to, to lift out when it's all set. There we go. Excellent. <laughs> so we've got our lined cake pan. So back to here and our Rocky Road mix. Now, I was also reading, when I was finding out a bit more about the where Rocky Road came from, um, and it sounds really good, maybe not for this one, but the uh, it's really, uh, I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it's really common in Australia as well to put shredded coconut into it, desiccated coconut, which I thought sounded really lovely, especially if you did maybe one for Christmas, like it's got white chocolate and cranberries and all sorts of things in there, um, maybe some gingerbread. Um, I thought that sounded really, really good. <laughs> Um, and apparently people put a lot of, uh, like, put nuts in it. So peanuts, apparently a traditional, but almonds, Brazil nuts, walnuts, and pistachios, which 
obviously I'm I, I've got an allergy, so I stay away from the nuts. But the pistachios with the cranberries and the white chocolate for Christmas sounds a really great idea. So into my mixture now, I'm going to pour my cooled chocolate and butter and Biscoff mix in. And there's loads of it here. So we're going to just scrape off the spoon. I'm just going to put that over there and get the rest of it out of the bowl as well. You don't want to waste any of this. Get it all in. Don't leave any bowl to uh, to lick. <laughs> Scrape out the bowl. Uh, get it all in. Just pop that in the sink and then mix it all through. And you want to make sure it's mixed really well. So everything there has got plenty of chocolate on it because when it sets that's what's gonna when that chocolate sets when it's in the fridge that's what's gonna hold everything together it's gonna bind it all really nicely and i've just put the bowl in the sink that i was gonna melt some more chocolate into oh dear fantastic i'm hoping as well the sound last week we had a little bit of a sound delay so i'm hoping Maybe everything is sorted out. So if you want to, you could put some glassy cherries in there, but I wasn't sure how they would go with our caramel and our biscoff and our toffee popcorn and all of that sort of stuff. So I've left no fruit in this one. So we haven't got one of our five a day. So it's not as healthy as a healthy as a rocky road with some fruit. And you could put some sultanas in, maybe some raisins. Um People use dried blueberries as well. That might go well with um, something like this because they're not overly sweet, uh, raisins, etc. So then this again is the easy bit. Just pour it in to our tin. Get it all in. There we go. I'm just thinking what bowl I can grab to do the melt some more chocolate. This one's too big, that one's too small, and that one is in the sink. And that one's too big as well. We'll have to quickly wash up. Oh, for some bizarre reason, it's uh, recording there. Let's get rid of that. Right. So we've got this in. Yes, I know the card is full. Oh. Does that disappear? No. Oh, apologies, people. I don't seem to... Be able to get rid of card full. Uh, let me just. Sorry about that. We have a full card, and I'm not sure without deleting something how I get rid of that. So I'm just gonna pop this in here, and we're just gonna have to have full card on the screen for the moment. The joys of a live bake and technology, hey? <laughs> Happy days. So in here then I've just got my rocky road and I'm just going to level this all out. You can do this with the back of a spoon or your spatula or you can use your angled palette knife, you know, that I like. But you want to make sure... There's no gaps, because if there's any gaps when it's in, that's not going to hold together. So give it a good, a good squidge down. Don't be afraid. It's not going to, it's not going to, um, you're not going to break it. It's not like a cake where we're pushing any um, air out or we're knocking it back. We just want really nice thick chunky pieces in there but we want to get as much as we possibly can don't let any gaps in 
Right. I'm sorry about that card full, folks. I must have hit the record button by accident. It doesn't normally happen. <laughs> wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Right. So if you want to, you can actually just leave this here, pop it in the fridge and then uh, and then um, for a couple of hours and then cut it up. But we're not going to we're not going to stop there. We're going to uh, melt some chocolate over the top so we get a nice level off. Because as you can see, it's quite chunky. You know, it's rocky road. So it's rocky, rocky road surface. Um, but we're going to melt some chocolate again over the top. So let me just quickly. I've got a bowl of washing up water here. Let's grab a drying cloth and we're going to do it. So you can, uh, again, go in with the caramel milk chocolate or the white chocolate. We're going to go in with just white chocolate because I think it will give a nice contrasting color to what we've got there on the bottom. So pop that to one side. Let's get our chocolate in now you don't have to use 200 grams you know it depends how much chocolate you want to melt on the top i'm just going to go in actually with all of this um for this so i get a really nice thick layer of extra white chocolate on the top so i'm going to be chopping these into really small pieces this is really soft this is how warm it is in here today oh that card full is annoying me <laughs> If it's annoying you, let me know in the comments because I don't know how to turn it off. And Canon do this strange thing where they they only allow you to film for 30 minutes. And if you haven't touched it, it decides you can, it's going to switch off. And I must have, when I was telling it I was still filming, I must have hit the record button <laughs> instead. Oh, dearie me. Oh, I missed a bit there. So we've got, uh, we've got in there an extra 200 grams of white chocolate. And just let's pop that there. And this is still warm from earlier. So I'm just going to pop the heat back on and put that on top. So once that's sort of melted away, we can um, melt a little bit of extra Biscoff, which... Um, we can then drizzle over the top as well. So that's actually really quite simple for this. Um, I think I'm just going to see if I can uh, let's see if, if No, I can't get rid of the card full. I am really sorry, guys. Um, Canon, <laughs> not that you're watching, but if you are, that really irritates me that I can't get rid of the card full. <laughs> I press the button and everything, and it's just not going away. But anyway, so we're melting a little bit more of our chocolate. I am going to melt a little bit of the Biscoff, but I'm thinking I'm going to do that in the microwave um because i don't need a lot to melt over the top there so into my uh, microwave dish i'm gonna add the remaining 50 grams of the biscoff Oop. come on which is uh, like is is about that much but once we scrape that off there we go And we've got our white chocolate just melting there on the side. So that's melting. I can see that going. The water's obviously heating up. This is going in the microwave. Now, when you're melting Biscoff in the microwave, if you let it go too far, it will catch and burn. Uh, so do it in 30-ish second blast. Don't go too far, too far, and it'll burn. And it's, it's not nice when it burns or catches. It's quite acrid sort of taste smell so go gentle that's 
still warm from earlier, but so let's go microwave and not quite so high on the temperature, but we'll go that for 45 seconds. So we've got our Biscoff melting. I've got our white chocolate melting. I'm just going to grab a spoon here and I can check that out. They say you can do this in the microwave if you prefer, but... I thought today I'd just do it over the double boiler for you guys. Um, and things. Again, like I was saying, when you're melting chocolate, you don't need to melt it till it's all melted out. If you've got a few lumps in there, that's fine. The residual heat that you've got in that, in that chocolate will finish melting it off. Not a problem at all. And I can feel that and I can see that. So I'm going to turn that off just for the moment, and it's going to finish melting. Let's take a look at our Biscoff. Which, again, as well, is almost fully melted. Not fully, but if I give it a stir, the residual heat that's in the melted Biscoff will melt the remaining stuff. So that was just 45 seconds about 650 I think the wattage is on not our high one so you don't need to melt it for very long so there we go next then we are gonna melt pour our white chocolate it's just finished melting off if you give it a stir it'll just help those last bits melt out There we go. I'm just going to wipe its bum. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but we're going to pour this over so it levels off over the top. And then, oh, maybe I needed a bit more. Oh, shocking. Well, I've got a few holes there in my it's it's seeping inside <laughs> let's just give it a a smooth out and things normally 200 grams of extra chocolate is just right but maybe i've it's it's deciding i've got some it's finding its way into those nooks and crannies. Let's just give it a spread over. Get as much out as we possibly can. There we go. Just level it all off. We're going to have some lumps and bumps. That's fine. It's not a problem. It's all going to get eaten the same. So that's okay. That's not a problem. And then... I'm just going to drizzle over then my Biscoff. We're going to go with some stripes that way. And then we're going to spin it around. You can do this however you want. You know, you don't have to. And if you've got any Biscoff sauce, this this is great. Just drizzled over ice cream <laughs> when it's melted. Um, got Biscoff everywhere now. And if you want to, you can just go in with some final Biscoff pieces. Now, my, my chocolate hasn't melted are giving me as much of a texture as I thought it was on the top. So I'm not going to add in any because there's not really going to give anything into that. So let's just get rid of a few bits and pieces there. Let's move that to one side because it's quite warm. And that's it. So this point now, this goes in the fridge. Make sure it's not warm, hot before you put it in because you don't want to be putting warm things into the fridge. Um, but that goes into the fridge. You need to leave it for about two hours 
bare minimum, it might be set by then, but it probably still be a little bit soft. I tend to leave mine in the fridge overnight. When you cut it, however, if you cut it when it's straight out the fridge, it will crumble because um, it's too cold. So bring it out the fridge, let it come up to room temperature, then slice it through. And uh, like I do with the brownies, just run a, uh, a sharp knife under the tap, under the warm tap, and that will just help warm that knife blade up, obviously dry it off, and that will give you a nice smooth cut on that. So let's pop this in the fridge. Uh, we are still card full. And I'm just going to, it's, it's been one of them Wednesday evenings, hasn't it? I've got sun issues. I hopefully have a uh, microphone that works. Um, it's quite nice. It's quite liberating with a little radio pack on and moving around. But also I'm hoping it's going to give a better sound quality because I was noticing that the, the mic that's on top of the camera, when I'm closer to it, is better. But it's, it's quite away in the kitchen and it's a big space. It's echoey. So I'm hoping this is going to be better. So let's ignore the fact we've got a full card. Let's just have a quick rundown again of what we've done. Uh, so we've made today a Biscoff Rocky Road. Now, this is going to make between 12 and 24 portions. Depends how big you cut it. I've made this in a nine-inch cake pan, but you can make it in a brownie pan. You can make it in a smaller pan if you want to get a really big, nice, deep, thick uh, Rocky Road piece going on there. But it's really quick. It's really easy. There's absolutely no baking. Um, so it's a really good one to do with the kids. Obviously, don't do the heating bit with them. You do the melting or any sort of microwave stuff uh, with the kids. And then that's sort of better um, than getting them doing anything with the hot stuff. But they can then get stuck in. They can do the breaking of the cookies, the biscuits, the marshmallows. If they're anything like me, it's absolute nightmare because if I'm make, making this and I'm not on camera doing a live or doing it for the for the YouTube channel or anything, I've probably eaten half the biscuits by now, <laughs> if I'm totally honest. Um, but you, this is stuffed with Biscoff. It's made with Biscoff spread as well. We've used white chocolate, but we have also used the new caramel caramel from Cadbury's which I've tried a piece of this and was amazing so just earlier on um, I really like this and I am no way hashtag not spawn uh, no way sponsored on this I just couldn't help myself as soon as I saw it was available <laughs> So that's that. Let's just run down our ingredients really quickly. So we've used 200 grams of white chocolate and 200 grams of the caramel. If you don't can't get caramel or don't want to use it or you just want to use white chocolate, make sure you use 400 grams of white chocolate instead. There's 100 grams of unsalted butter in there. That's just we just melt that through with the chocolate. And we've into the melted mixture, we put in 50 grams of Biscoff spread, this one, not the crunchy one, the smooth one. Um, I don't know what the crunchy one would do, actually, but you want to melt it so you want it smooth. Um, we've then used 250 grams of Biscoff biscuits. That's about a pack. You can, I did say some for going on the top, so I've probably used about 200 grams in total. Uh, you can also use the chocolate ones as well if you want to. I decided not to because they are like a milk chocolate rather than a white chocolate or anything that would go with uh, the chocolate we've got in the Rocky Road. Uh, we've popped in some mini marshmallows. You can use regular marshmallows, just chop them up. And we've also gone in with some caramel popcorn just to give extra crunchy, bitey, sweet pieces. Equipment-wise, really, really simple. You can do this in a microwave, so you need a bowl to melt your chocolate and your butter and your biscoff in, and a large bowl to mix everything into. You need something to put it all in, and like I said, I've made this in a brownie pan. At, you can make this in a brownie pan, sorry, but I've made it in a nine-inch cake pan. You can make it in a smaller one if you want. Um, things like angled palette knife is great just for leveling off, but you can do everything with a spatula or even a spoon. So like I say, great for the kids. And you need baking parchment, just something to line your tin with so it gives it doesn't stick, it doesn't make a mess of your tin really, and you can then just lift it out really easily as well. So that's it. Um it's been quite a quick one today, I guess. Um uh, a bit of a 
Random. I mean, we've got this card full thing, and I'm, ugh. Me and Canon are going to fall out at some point. <laughs> but I hope you really, really enjoyed it. It's um, I'm liking these Wednesday evening ones. It's a bit more of a slower pace than a Sunday morning. We will be going back to Sunday mornings later in the year. Um, it's summer, though. Everybody's got lots of things going on. We want to be out and about on the weekends. But Wednesday night is Wednesday night treats. Uh, make, watch me make them now, and then you can make them at the weekend. So the post, all the full ingredients and everything for this, will be up on the blog as soon as I get a chance to take some pictures, which will be when the Rocky Road is set, so that will be tomorrow. Uh, so they'll be all there for you. But if you are new, then um, if you're on the Facebook page, then drop us a like, say hello. If you're over on the YouTube channel, then let me know in the comments, say hello, hit up the subscribe button. There's a little bell there for notifications. It'll let you know when I post a new video or we do another live. We are here every Wednesday for the next eight weeks with more recipes going on. And next week, I've got the wrong way again. <laughs> next week, we are making chocolate finger cheesecake. <laughs> you know the ones, the caramel, sorry, the Cadbury's chocolate fingers. Again, the ones that once you open the packet, you don't know where they disappear to. But we're going to be making a no-bake cheesecake with those next week. I can't wait. I've managed to find little really diddy ones as well. <laughs> so I'm really excited about that too. But thank you very much for joining me here on Crumbs and Corkscrews. I've been Lou, your dessert obsessed baker. If you're looking for anything around baking basics or easy desserts that are really delicious and easy to make, then you can find that all on the channel or on the Facebook page, on the watch list, and also on the blog. You'll find all the links that are linked down in the comments below and various links as well in the top. Thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you for persisting with card full. <laughs> I'm going to find out how to get rid of that. Um, but I hope you all have a really good rest of your Wednesday evening. And um, I will see you again next week. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>